Okay, you guys, we're going to get started. There's good news and bad news. The good news is, um, in my opinion, it's usually downhill from here to some degree. Um, so that's good news. The bad news is we're still talking about probability, but it's done in a way that uh, we're going to look at probability formulas now. And I actually think it's a little bit easier than some of the other things that we've been doing, but you know, it's, that's an opinion. So let's go back and take a look at something that we did before, right? Do you guys remember what this is? What was this? Frequency distribution. Good. That's a frequency distribution. Is that right? OK. Oops, I shouldn't have wrote it there. Um, Fine. The question that was asked here was now, how many hours of sleep did you get last night? Is that right? Anybody get any sleep? <laughs> Good. How do you compute the relative frequencies? Do you guys remember how to do this? Add up the frequency. Let's do this for argument's sake, OK? Now, I, you don't do this in real life, but we're going to do it for the sake of time. I'm going to say, OK, let's say that 0.125 of us got no sleep. Let's say point what? Um, 315 has what? One hour. Nobody slept for two hours. Nobody slept for three. Slept for four, maybe point what? Oh, I don't know, 175. Slept for five hours, we'll put another point, uh, 125. And so what should the six hours or more be? Anybody know? Because these relative frequencies should add up to one. So what's the complement now? What do you guys get? What should this be? If I add these values, what do you guys have? You guys got to get your calculator. Add these values. 0 0.125, 0 0.315, 0 0.175. You guys going to make me do this? This is 0 0.3. This is 0 0.425. This is uh, 0 0.425 plus 0.315. 10, 2, 3, 4. Ah, 0 0.74. OK. So then this has to be point what? 260. OK. So this is a relative frequency table. And what we could have done is gathered data and then converted this to a relative frequency. The point is, this is what's known as real life probability. OK, this is real life probability. Because there's nothing inherent about you. We can't look at, let's say, the bottom of your feet and say, ah, you're going to sleep for two hours. You're going to sleep for five. You're going to sleep for all these different hours. So this is what's called real life probability. Okay, it's a relative frequency. But the point is, it's probability. So what we have to do is this. Um, let's note that what this means is 12.5% of the class had no sleep last night. Is that true? And 31.5% had only one hour. Nobody slept for two. Nobody slept for three. 17.5% slept for four. 125 slept for five. And about 26% slept for more than six hours. Yeah, you guys okay with that? About how to read this? Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about what's known as probability distributions. Probability distribution. Okay. Um, this actually is a probability distribution, and I'll show you how, but let me define a few things first. X is the list of all possible outcomes. Okay? P of X, in yes, this is functional notation. 
It's functional notation, meaning that's p of x. Let's write it down. p of x. That's defined to be the probability of x. OK? Now, this is known as a random variable. Simply because, or ironically, it's really not random and it's not even a variable. Okay? X is simply a placeholder of values. It's a list of all possible values. Okay, so we're going to look at some examples here. In particular, X is the number of hours that people slept. Notice again, it's not random. It's not even a variable. All we're saying here is that X assumes the values of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6 or more. Because isn't this the list of all possible outcomes? Is that true? You guys okay with that? And in this relative frequency table, of course, p of x is that relative frequency, that probability. Okay, you guys okay with this? Good. So, how this works is in the following way. We first have to talk about notation. Okay, once we, get, once we master this idea of notation, we're going to go to the formulas. So if I write this down, the probability that x is 0, okay, you'll see this in your book, and it looks really confusing because you got this equal sign within a parenthesis, and you got this other equal sign. What this is really saying or thought of as is what is p of 0? Okay, p of 0. This is the probability of 0. What does x represent again? The number of hours that people slept. So if you say, oh, the probability that x is 0, what do you put here as an answer? What do you think? When x is 0, what's the probability? 0 0.125. OK. So what we're doing here is we're looking at how to read this table in terms of the probability notation. OK, you guys OK with that? You guys see how to read this? x is a list of outcomes. All these numbers are the outcomes. The probability of 0 is 0.125. What about this? What's the probability of 1? Meaning, what's the probability I select a student at random and that student slept for one hour? What are you guys going to say? 0. Point what? 315? You guys okay with that? What about the probability that I select a student and the student slept for two hours? Zero. What does that mean? <laughs> that the event is impossible. It means nobody slept for what? Two hours, right? Okay, what's, what's the probability that a student slept for three hours? What is it? Zero. Zero. Good. What's the probability that a student slept for four hours? 0 0.175. Good. And the probability that a student slept for five hours? 0. Point what? 125. And the probability that a student slept for six or more hours? 0. Point 0.260. OK? So this is how this notation fills and works. Yes, I didn't write down every step of the way. What's the probability that x is 1? But it's, it's implied. What's the probability that x is 2? x is 3. It's implied. x is 4. x is 5. And x is 6 or more. So I just want to let people know that interchangeably, this is what it is. And so sometimes if you read in the book and you see these two equal signs, don't be discouraged because it's just notation. 